everyone and welcome to prompt number 65. I thought since I've done a face reveal I should start putting my face in these so hello. Alright let's see what we've got. It's a double. We have sand dune and archer. Alright okay here we go. This is one of those prompts that I just had no idea. No ideas, no inspiration, nothing. So when it came to sketching, I just started sketching from references just to see what I could come up with. Usually if I don't have an idea, sketching just different things, different poses, different references, just sort of helps the, the gears of creativity start turning and usually I come up with something. But by the end of this sketchbook page, I still didn't really know what I was going to do. So of course, to make it at least a little bit interesting, I wanted to make the pose of the archer interesting. So what is different from just someone standing there holding a bow and arrow? Well, I would assume a handstand archer would be more interesting, I suppose. So that's one of the first things I was trying to get inspiration from. I also just thought about having someone either sliding down the sand dune or jumping off the sand dune and shooting a bow and arrow, just really looking dramatic over a sand dune because sand dunes look kind of cool. But I just wasn't feeling it. So one of the ideas I was thinking about with this archer person character was that it could be a statue of someone being an archer. Being in the desert in a sand dune, I thought it would be kind of mysterious for it to be buried by the sand, I guess, because a sand dune is something that is gradually built up. It would be interesting for the sand to have gradually built up over this statue of a archer. And then I really started to get reminded of an old prompt, prompt number 14, which was sculpture and magic carpet. It was the statue of this really big lady that someone had stumbled upon or someone was looking for. Basically, just a giant statue that had been abandoned somewhere in the middle of nowhere. And I really liked the backstory of this character. I said it was maybe a dropped religion or just some sort of society that maybe had a lot of respect for these big creatures or it was their god or something. And I really wanted to revisit that idea. And as much as I like to do different and new ideas for these prompts just to see what I can come up with, I really, really wanted to revisit this giant lady statue. I was basically already going to do this idea, so I might as well have tied them in together. Plus, it's fun to revisit an old prompt, sort of. I mean, this was a very, very long time ago. Almost a year at this point. That's not true. It's June 12th was when I did that prompt. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is a prompt I end up going back and adding to later if I ever get a different sort of landscape and some sort of thing some person can do. Don't be surprised if I make another giant statue lady. Can you imagine though, usually if this was a single prompt, I would probably go ahead and make six of these giant lady drawings. But for some reason I'm doing this one, one in each video. I don't know. Do I know? I don't know anything. Oh, dang it. I just remember that I gave the other one six arms and it would have been interesting if this archer had more than two arms, but oh well. One of the things I did with the original prompt is that I had her falling apart, even though one of her arms is on the ground and that's the only damage to it. I definitely wanted to show that in this one as well. So one of her arms is broken off, part of her leg is broken off, broken off. Her hair also fell off somewhere and although that looks like it could be a hairdo, it's not supposed to be her hairdo. And the arrow that she was shooting has been fumbled away down, further down on the sand dune. Now, if it wasn't obvious right now, this sand dune is very, very large, which makes this statue even larger. Later, I do put some very small birds in the sky, but for now, imagine a person not even being able to reach the top of the base of the statue. That's how big she is. So because the first one in this series was really bright and colorful, it had a bright blue sky, it was in a field of golden wheat or something, and I really just liked how bright it was. So I definitely wanted to try to mimic that in this one as well, but I did want it to be a different time of day and just a different mood in general. So I thought a setting sun with a purple and pink sky, which would also alter the color of the sand dune because sand is sort of a light yellowy brown color. The setting pink sky would probably make the sand have a sort of red hue. Though looking at it, it doled out quite a bit when it dried, so it's not as bright as it looks on camera. And it did look that bright when I was painting it, that really bright orangey red color. But looking at it right now, it's like a brown purple color. I suck at watercolors. What can I say? I feel like I am still learning how to do watercolor and I know I've been using it for a couple of years now, but I have a lot to learn. 
I also wanted to mimic that onto the statue. So the original statue was a very light gray color and I made this one a bit of a darker gray color but also added just a little bit of purple to it. I'm really trying to work on my light sources and my moods of drawings and just really working on color and environments. I especially really liked working with bright colors in the last prompt so I was trying to do a little bit with this one. But like I said, the colors got so dull. I don't know why. That said, I don't really mind that the color dulled down. I do like that the sky is really bright and it's kind of more of the attention, I suppose, because the lady, the statue lady is up where the sky is. So the sand isn't really important. It's dull, it's whatever. It's just sand anyways, right? I want your eyes to go to the bright sky and the lady. Oh, okay, so I just realized something really funny. I was looking at the image as I do when I do my voiceovers and I was looking at the section where I had the legs separated. The leg that is bent, I took a chunk out of it because I thought that would be an interesting place for there to be a chunk missing. And originally, okay, never mind. I just realized I'm stupid again. <laughs> I was gonna say it doesn't make any sense that she's still in the air because I only had that one support pole in mind. However, that's clearly not enough support, so I was imagining there being two support poles. You can't see the other one, but it is on the other leg. And although that's still not enough support to hold the remainder of the statue that isn't just that little leg, there's still a support pole there and um, it makes sense, right? She's buried in the sand? Is that my excuse? Oh boy. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this prompt. Do you remember the original prompt, number 14, where the other statue's from? If not, huh, go give it a watch. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the end card. So last week's prompt was Island Paradise and as usual it was really interesting to see what you guys thought an Island Paradise looked like. If not a real sort of Island Paradise or just something fun. It was really interesting to look through all of the differences and of course I've got two featured artists. The first one is Acrylic Tramp who to be honest I'm not really sure what's going on in this image but the fish are really cute. The little fish house is really cute and the kitty holding a fishing rod with a bone off of the island is really cute and I just like it. It's, it's different. I don't know what's going on. It's really weird, but I like it. And Mattyology who had this really bright and colorful and adorable styled island paradise with a pirate and some cute little things going on with the little crabs. They're so cute. I love it. I just, I love it. Mattyology is great. So thank you all for joining and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.